Uh, well, I think, yes, increasingly digital learning is going to become a bigger and bigger part of the, the total landscape uh, in terms of education. And I think uh, certainly this is going to be a big thing at the university level and probably also at the high school level in sort of the auxiliary sense in order to support existing courses and so on. But at the university level we have this uh, possibility of having entire suites of courses that are all entirely online. So that's a very big change from what we have currently. Digital literacy, um, I would say maybe this is uh, being comfortable with creating and accessing uh, online digital tools, maybe creating them, maybe using them, sharing them. Um, I think most young people sort of fall into this category, us older people maybe not so, so easily, but uh, I think it's increasingly important uh, in the modern world, clearly. Yes, I think teachers these days uh, should be able to create resources uh, that they can put online. They should be able to create digital resources that their students can access outside of the classroom at their own time um, that amplify and sort of solidify and maybe review uh, the standard materials. Uh, so I think it's a uh, yeah, very important skill for, for young people who are becoming educators to to learn how to you know, make videos, how to post things, how to create uh, questions or maybe uh, uh, assignments, you know, the, the, uh, to create online courses, for example, or, or just making, uh, making images, making maybe some applets to illustrate some technical thing that can also be a very important and useful skill. I'm coming from mathematics, and in mathematics, a lot of the concepts are easier to understand if they're accompanied by something that's visual. And I think that's a very important aspect, important advantage that the online thing you know, gives us, that it allows people to access visual and often graphically moving images that you know, really explain more clearly what's going on in some more complicated mathematical situation. Yeah, so I have quite a lot of experience creating small uh, professional development courses on a platform called Open Learning, which is actually a, an Australian platform. It's a course management system, a little bit like Moodle and, and such, but it's, it's sort of more small scale and it's um, something that is very flexible. So you could actually sign up and start creating a course in an afternoon, really. Um, so it's a, it's, I think it's a powerful tool to, um, to allow educators maybe just to create their own course. Maybe they're t teaching a course in something that they're interested in. They want to make their own resources. They want to put uh, some videos together with some text, with some images. They want to create some activities for students. It might be quizzes, but it might also be crossword puzzles or uh, fill in the blanks or you know, connect these concepts with these objects. So these kinds of things are all incorporated in the open learning platform and um, it's, a, it's a fun kind of social uh, platform that allows people to make comments and respond to questions all on the platform. So it's quite attractive. I, uh, I've made probably you know, more than a dozen courses on open learning and I'm in the process still of making more. So it's, uh, it's something that I'm quite interested in. If you're interested in, for example, one, I have one called Math Terminology for Incoming Uni Students. So if you Google that, you will probably find the, this open learning course and you can sort of see what it's, what it's like. So there's a course I created based on some YouTube videos, but with also some, some extra content for students to do. Well, I think those are sort of two separate questions in a way, and both are important. You know, I mean, the advantages for uh, students are that they can access materials anytime, 
for any place, just perhaps with a mobile phone. So that gives them a lot more flexibility in terms of learning. It also means typically that they can uh, access materials again. They can review things. If they haven't understood a lecture, they can just go back. They can rewind. They can look at things uh, over and again. And there's also maybe, in some sense, maybe even maybe more opportunities for commenting. Sometimes in a classroom, if, especially if it's a big classroom, students will be a little bit nervous about asking questions. But you know, in an online environment, maybe they don't feel so, so embarrassed to ask a little question somebody else a answers. So there's definitely a, a advantages uh, there. But on the other hand, there is that sort of face-to-face -face contact that, that one is missing. So one has to find a balance between you know, online things and face-to-face and -face things. And, um, and another, another challenge that one has to uh, really squarely face is that creating online activities or exercises is usually a lot more challenging than people think. So often people, when they're making online courses, they think, well, it's all about videos and, and content. We have, to, we have to make videos and then we have to write up the content. And then they say, oh, and by the way, and then we also need some, some ex exercises for the students to do. I think uh, it's probably safe to start small, you know, and, and in a non-threatening environment. So I think one thing that uh, is very easy to do is to create a, a YouTube channel and just to make some videos. So if you're a teacher, you probably know something about a certain topic and you're passionate about something. So just make some videos on that topic. And they don't have to be really flash. They don't have to have super graphics. It can just be you and a camera. But, you know, if, the, if somebody is passionate about something and they know something about it, they can convey that um, in a very simple kind of way. And then you can post some videos. And so then you have some videos on YouTube. And maybe you post a number of them and, uh, and you get some responses and um, you get a sense that maybe I can make a course out of some of these. Maybe I have 10 videos on how to bake a cake or something, how to bake a chocolate cake, lots of chocolate cakes. Okay, so then you can make a course on how to make chocolate cakes, you know. And so it doesn't have to be very big, and that's one of the reasons why something like open learning is maybe a good uh, thing to think about, because you can just start making a course, you know, after you sign up. It's, it's sort of fun. And, uh, and then you, you, you just try and you say to your students, okay, here's this course, what do you think? Let's go online and see, you know, give me your input. Um, that's, I think, a, um, a good way to start is by, by teaching people something that you already know about, something that you're feeling, feeling comfortable with and, and, and are interested in. I would just add that I think this really is an exciting, an exciting area. Uh, the world is changing very quickly and especially the world of education for sure is going to be changing very, very quickly in the coming decades. And we don't actually really know, you know how it's going to pan out. Um, a lot of people have ideas. But I would say that uh, you know, being part of it uh, is, is exciting. It's exciting and interesting, so it's a, it's a fun thing to do. And also, I think, very valuable to students.